I made one of my favorite designs to date last year, the Crystal Gems Aquarium. Its defining feature is glowing crystals that I created by combining underwater lights with chunks of glass. I do enjoy it, but I know it could be better, and as I've explained in a recent video, the Crystal Gems Aquarium was a concept I wanted to explore, and although I really like it, I want to refine it on a larger scale. The key word there is refine. I was limited in what I could do at the time because I built it within a small 10 gallon tank, only days after severely injuring my finger. My ability to create was greatly hindered because I pretty much had to do the entire thing with one hand. One of the first and obvious visual improvements could be with the gems themselves. Glass worked fine, but why not use real chunks of quartz? They won't affect the water parameters and will look much better. Additionally, I have a larger 26 gallon tank to work with. It's actually one of the DIY IKEA aquariums that I built last summer. This housed the underwater riparium setup that I dismantled three months ago. The riparian bubbles and glow light danios did well, but I wasn't pleased with the aquarium's progress. So I moved the fish in with the ram cichlids and left the enclosure vacant for nearly three months. When I went to clean it completely for this project, I found something amazing. What little water remained housed upwards of 100 baby fish. Their parents must have laid eggs before I moved them. That said, they won't go into this tank, so I put them into the quarantine room to grow out. Although it doesn't directly relate to what I'm about to build, I thought it was a perfect time to share. Anyway, with a clean canvas, I can finally get to work on the new design. The best place to begin was with the quartz crystals, one of which was a crystal tower. This, however, is polished and doesn't match the others, but it was a cheaper option to get something this large. In hopes to get a rawer appearance, I broke it up with a chisel. I just had to glue some of the pieces back together. I also wanted a glass base for each light to optimize installation. I cut these out of a larger piece. Similarly as before, I'll install the crystals over top of the lights to get that glowing appearance. I'm using the same set as before because they held up well. I simply applied silicone to the glass and pressed the quartz into it to create bunches. I thought this would be the easiest way to create the aesthetic I want. And I don't know about you, but I thought they looked really cool even at this phase in the process. However, the challenge now is finding a way to situate these above the lights. I dropped them into the tank in a staggered configuration, where I intended to use hardscape elements to hold the crystals. However, this didn't work at all, so I tried something different. Instead, I used shims, PVC pipe scraps, and zip ties to lock the lights onto egg crate light diffuser. I did some cord management while I was at it as well. I then cut the bottoms off of deli cups, which fit perfectly over the lights and thus could act as a riser for the crystalline structures. I applied silicone around the lights, nested the deli cups, evened out the silicone, applied more along the top edge, and finally put the crystals on each light. The result being these standalone structures that I could easily nest within the hardscape. Well that was the thought at least. Scaping around them was actually kind of challenging. I had to experiment for well over an hour before I found a direction to follow, again using lava rock and spiderwood branches. It did eventually come together, and it was at this point that I began mixing up aquarium safe epoxy. I pressed it between the contact points to lock everything together and create a standalone structure. Building on an egg crate foundation was great because I can move it to and from the tank with ease. This really came into play when I moved it into the tank to better design the secondary island. It also allowed me to have the proper perspective on how tall to go. Repeating the steps from before, I worked lava rock and spiderwood around the lights with epoxy. I also added a few more crystals within each bundle. As I worked through this, I also thought the islands would look best if they were connected with branches, kind of like a bridge. While this bent piece framed in the left side of the scape creating exceptional movement. Even as is, it was coming together really well, but the details will take it to the next level. I knew that doing this outside of the tank would be much easier. First, I concealed the epoxy with super glue and lava rock dust that I made from undesirable pieces of stone. I wove thinner branches within all of this for more textural contrast that I locked in accordingly. With the cure time and everything, it took several days to get this right. It was well worth the effort though. The different textures create an interesting chaotic design that complements the crystals. Prior to putting it back in the tank though, I installed a window frost film. Finally seeing the completed scape within the glass was very satisfying. Well, it was almost complete. I had to add a few more stones. I filled the back with smaller chunks of lava rock as well to provide more surface area for beneficial bacteria. 
I thoroughly sprayed it all down afterward to remove debris. I also installed the filter behind the scape, complete with a sponge pre-filter. In the previous setup, I used black sand to match the stones. However, for this one, I decided to use brown sand, which I felt would create a nice contrast between elements. Of course, I took the time to rinse it prior to remove debris. This setup won't include nutrient-demanding plants, so I'll only use sand. Even so, I broke up these root tabs and sprinkled them on the bottom for supplemental nutrients. I capped all of this with around an inch of sand. I also had to account for the above-the-rim plants. Unfortunately, I didn't make the hardscape tall enough to have the plant bases at the appropriate height. It was an easy fix though. I added more stones where I wanted the plants and locked them in with epoxy. I'll plant the aquatics prior to that though. I primarily selected epiphytes that I could wedge throughout the hardscape without substrate. I knew this is what I was going to do from the beginning and left pockets and crevices where I could easily nest them. The original rendition of this tank obviously didn't include many plants, and that's one of the main areas where I wanted this one to differ. Plus, I personally think that the pops of green alongside the crystals and black stones look so good. Additionally, I knew a few bunches of cryptocrine in the substrate would bring it all together. I'll plant it up and it looked great. I still had to add the riparian plants though, so I gave the tank a good spray to keep these from drying out and process them accordingly. I removed whatever substrate I could by hand and thoroughly rinsed the rest. Since there's so much hardscape, nesting them within filter foam was one of my best options. I chopped it into strips that fit tightly between the glass and stones. With these, I could sandwich the base and roots between the foam and wedge them behind the hardscape. I've made riparian planters plenty of times before, but this was probably one of my easier methods. And there's no questioning the result. Going above the rim added an extra layer of dimension that makes this even more appealing. In fact, I think it's the correct option for just about every rimless aquarium. Extra filtration, better aesthetics, and more plants. How can you go wrong with that? Plus, they help hide the hardware like the hang on back filter. Now after moving it back over to the rack and filling it up, I was able to add the final details. Honestly, not much was needed. I just sprinkled in some small stones for more texture and put moss atop the hardscape. All things considered, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. From the crystalline structures to the overall aesthetic, I think it's a great reimagining of the original concept. It would look better with the fish though, first of which are black neon tetras. I had a few from the previous tank, but I added more to get a bigger skull. I like a lot of oddball fish, and one of my favorites is the banjo catfish. I thought one would look perfect in this tank. Of course, I also had to include some Amano shrimp and a few snails. I enjoyed this setup already, but seeing it inhabited by life brought things to the next level. And while we're talking about that, I should probably mention that I seeded the filter with established media to get the cycle going immediately. Let's not forget about the terrestrial plants either, they'll be putting in some serious work. I'm sure that the majority of you know that I prefer making natural looking setups, but I have a lot of fun making experimental fantasy designs like this as well. I also forgot to mention that the lights are adjustable, which makes for a completely different mood and aesthetic. Exploring different concepts within this art form while providing a great home for the fish is a lot of fun. I know this looks nothing like the natural environment where these fish are found, but they just look so graceful swimming throughout it and as though they belong. I've considered how I would revisit this idea for a while now, and although it's derived from an older concept, I think it's a truly unique design all its own.